Hello, I'm Chris Andrews, Chief Investment Officer here at Latrobe Financial. Today, as part of our Investor Insight series, I'll be speaking with Dwight Scott, Senior Managing Director and Global Head of Blackstone Credit, the credit arm of the Blackstone Group. Blackstone, of course, needs no introduction. It has an incredible $584 billion in assets under management, and it is a leading global investment business focused, as indeed we are here at Latrobe Financial, on creating long-term value for investors by the very careful stewardship of their investment capital. As I said, Blackstone has $584 billion in assets under management. Of that, $174 billion, or 30%, is in real estate. $189 billion, or 32%, is in private equity. $78 billion, or 13%, is in hedge fund solutions. And $144 billion, or 25%, is in credit and insurance. Now, Dwight heads up the credit operation, now known as Blackstone Credit, which itself has $135 billion of assets under management globally. And Dwight's story is a fascinating one. Blackstone Credit is, of course, the new name for the business formerly known as GSO Capital Partners. That business was acquired by Blackstone way back in 2008. Dwight was part of the GSO Capital Partners team from its inception in 2005. So today promises to be a very interesting discussion. So a very warm welcome to you, Dwight. Chris, thank you very much. That's, that's such a kind uh, introduction. I do f feel that we're part of a large family um, that Latrobe and, and, and the Blackstone team have put together over the years. So it's fun to be here with you and with uh, many of your customers. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Dwight. And look forward to exploring some really interesting issues with you today. And perhaps we kick off, let's, you know, from, from that positioning statement, we kick off, we go back to 2008, and that's when Blackstone acquired GSO. At that stage, Blackstone had, uh, GSO had $9.6 billion in assets under management and fewer than 150 employees. So it's now got 135 billion in AUM, as I said earlier, and more than 350 staff. So I reckon that is an annual growth rate of something like 25% over a 12 year period. Tell us about that transaction back in 2008, and then the journey that's delivered really amazing results, both for the business, but also most importantly for investors. Well, um, I think there's some really interesting stories there. First and foremost, you have to go back before 2008 for it all to make um, sense and all to come together. M many of the partners that joined together in 2005 to, to form GSO were uh, ultimately worked together back at, a, at an investment bank called Donaldson, Lufkin and Jenrette. And I worked there, Bennett, Tripp, Doug, the GSNO of GSO worked there along with many of us. Our boss at the time was a guy named Tony James who left um, DLJ to join um, to join Blackstone. Mm -hmm. And so when, when Blackstone started looking around for a credit business, we had this great history and comfort with Tony and, and ultimately transferred that over to Steve Schwartzman and to the rest of the team at Blackstone. So it was an easy transition for us. And if you hear one theme that comes across in, in our investing and in my my thoughts of the world, it's knowing your your counterparties, being a good partner, knowing who you're doing deals with, knowing who you're negotiating with is a very important part of making credit work. And so we were very comfortable with, with Blackstone. And when we moved into Blackstone, it's interesting, we just made this name change to Blackstone Credit from GSO. When we were merging with Blackstone in 2008, our biggest concern was that our private equity sponsors that we do a lot of financing for back then and now um, would be concerned about doing a transaction with a company that is controlled by another private equity firm, Blackstone. Mm -hmm. And it's turned out that, that that's why we kept our name, for instance. And it's turned out that's not an issue at all. As a matter of fact, I think what we see across our business is the scale and scope that you get by being part of this large asset manager who's touching private equity, who's touching real estate is very valuable because you get unique insights that you wouldn't get if you were just by yourself as a credit business on a standalone basis. When you and I were speaking, getting ready for this, I do feel that how, how you look at the business and how we look at the business. When you think about periods like we just went through, so I go back to March of this year, 
we stopped working from the office on March 13th. So we said to all of our team, go and start working remotely. That was a big thing. In hindsight, we don't look at it as such a big thing anymore because it worked fine, but it wasn't all that clear that the markets were going to perform the way they they did. And the next week was really the weakest period in the credit markets in this downturn. And we were all working from home. And that next Saturday, which was March 22nd, it felt like the, the, the credit markets were, were going to fall apart. We were seeing big chunky blocks of assets being sold over the weekend, billions of dollars of assets being forced to be sold over the weekend, which generally is not a good sign for the market. And, and what we did was we got all of the teams within Blackstone that face the markets. So high yield, high grade credit, all the structured products, the, the, all the real estate credit, all the pieces, uh, uh, equities, the hedge fund uh, team. And we all got together for two hours on that Sunday and talked about what we thought we were going to see in the market the next week, what the opportunities were, what the risk were, how we were managing through that. And that teamwork and that approach to the market is very valuable when you go through periods of great disruption. Not, you know, when things are going well and everything's trading up and to the right, not as important, but when things are not uh, so easy, uh, it's clearly important. And I hope, uh, I hope you see the same thing in your business over time. Yeah, no, thank you, Dwight. And we we do. And likewise, you know, our experience in that period, that sort of March, late March, early April period was very much that. And as I say, again, the connection and, and immediacy that we had with the with the Blackstone team was 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 fabulous and was terrific to witness. Um, so, so perhaps let's let's move to the markets that that you operate in primarily at Blackstone Credit, obviously, the credit markets. Generally, for many investors, particularly retail investors, the, the breadth and the depth of those markets is underappreciated. They are extraordinarily broad and deep. So perhaps you could you could take us through the investable markets that you focus on at Blackstone Credit. You know, there's bonds, as you've talked about, you know, high yield, there's CLOs, there's 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 really a whole range of various investment types that you can target. What are your key strategies? Uh, and and in your view, what are the keys to successful investment? We've already established one, I think, which is know your counterparty. But what else do you see as the key themes of successful investment in that space? Uh, great question. So we are the one of the market leaders. We're the largest manager of CLOs in the market. CLOs are just a way to finance leveraged loans. And so to get give to really answer your question, leveraged loans in the US and Europe are about a 1.6 trillion, $1.7 trillion market. Uh, so a relatively deep market um, it has been developing over the last decade and a half, really, maybe 20 years now. And it is it's dominated by financings for private equity transactions. That's a big part of that. There's a bunch of private companies that also use the loan markets, uh, but that's a place we play floating rate, senior secured. You're going to hear me come back to this again and again to, to, in answer to the, the last part of your question. It's high up in the capital structure on companies that generally have real equity from, from knowledgeable investors coming in below you. So we like that market because it gives us return without taking long-term rate risk and without taking inordinate risk on the on the business performance. Then you shift a little bit to high yield, which are which are bonds. That's about a $2.3 trillion market in the US and Europe. So still a, a relatively large market. Um, that market is 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 bonds, so it's unsecured, it's fixed rate traditionally. So it, it has that rate risk that you see. It's the reason it's doing better this year than loans is because it's benefited from the falling rates. So those are two big parts of what we do. And then we do structured products where we, we provide financing for consumer loans and things like that. Once again, um, directly, cons directly uh, protected by the value of those underlying assets. And then you shift over to the other sort of half of our business, which is really private transactions where we provide capital directly to an issuer. We negotiate the deal. We originate the deal. We um, we work on the documentation and then we tend to be the, if we're not the only owner, we tend to be the largest owner of that investment. So that can be direct lending, which is, uh, which tends to be senior secured floating rate. It can be uh, mezzanine, which can be junior in the capital structure, a little higher return profile for the mezzanine transactions. It can be special, special industries like our, our energy business. And then you can fall down into things like, um, like uh, distressed and, and opportunistic things uh, that that benefit from market distress or company distress, all of those kind of on the range of the first things, leverage loans all the way to distress or, or lower return to higher return, 
all of those are part of our um, uh, business. When you ask what really matters, I, I think if you're not a person who lives and breathes the credit business every day, let me make one big difference between our business and equities. I think of equities as being a big strategic business. You make big decisions about where do I think the market's going? Do I want to be big in technology? Do I want to allocate to, to emerging markets? You know, how do I want to allocate these big strategic things? But generally, you're buying the same thing every time. You're buying the equity in a company. It looks like it trades. It's the residual value of that company. It's equity. Credit's a little different because you still do all those strategic things. You're still thinking about you know, what's the value of the business? Where do I want to be? Do I want to be more in tech, less in energy? You still make strategic decisions. But on top of that, you have these tactical decisions. Where do I want to be in the capital structure? Do I want to be senior secured? Do I want to be junior in the capital structure? Do I want fixed rate exposure, floating rate exposure? So what I like about the credit business is in periods like this, where we're a little, we're a little cautious um, because the underlying economic conditions in many of the markets where we invest we can be more senior in the capital structure and strategically protect ourselves. Maybe we take a little less return because of that, but it protects our investors' capital. So, so I just want to highlight the difference between credit and, and many of the other markets that people invest in.